Just hitting the go live button here. Okay, and so it looks good. Have a good meeting. No, I thank you. Okay, so good morning and welcome to Political Liaison of July twenty uh, fourth. Uh, first, uh, begin uh, with identifying any media on the line. Okay, I'm not seeing or recognizing any media on the line at this point. I'll look to the adoption of the agenda for political uh, liaison again of uh, July 24th. I'll move, Sherry Lynn. Moved by Sherry Lynn, seconded by Audrey to adopt our political liaison agenda. All in favor? Any opposed? Seeing or hearing none, motion is carried. Uh, we do have one delegation on our agenda today, uh, Kathy Mayer again from the Six Nations Cannabis Commission uh, to provide us with a second quarter uh, report as information. So I'll look to uh, welcome uh, Kathy to our political liaison uh, and I'll pass uh, the floor uh, over to yourself, uh, Kathy, to walk us through your presentation. So good morning and welcome, Kathy. She's trying to unmute herself, just hang on. Okay, no problem. Sorry, just bear with us. Anyway. Can you hear? Good morning. Yes, we can. Perfect. Okay. Good morning. Good morning. Does everyone have a copy of the second quarterly report? Yep. I sent it in a few weeks back. Yeah, it should be within was, the drop box. Okay. okay. There's a PowerPoint presentation, but I'll just go through it. There's... Okay, so, sounds good. Good morning, Kathy. The floor is yours. Thank you. Um, I'm Kathy Mayer, the Chief Commissioner of the Six Nations Cannabis Commission, and here to present the second quarterly report. The, in the spring of this year, we started a strategic planning session, and out of that session came our mission statement. Um, in our, your package, you'll see our mission statement is to engage and empower the Six Nations cannabis industry for the safety and betterment of the people of the Grand River Territory. We have a presence, if you've all noticed, on social media. Um, we have Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, as well as this is up and over our website that is continuously being updated um, by the Six Nations Cannabis Commission staff. It allows for the commission to communicate directly with the Six Nations community and the cannabis industry. Um, and from April to June, our followers have increased by 300%. Our engagement has increased by 246%. Um, we've reached more than 171 accounts and we've reached 60, over 1,600 Facebook users using our social media. We work very hard at that. Currently, um, we have this, our, this slide's now two weeks old, so we're moving very quickly. Um, we have more than this. We have um, some of the retailers, Willie's Weed Shack, Gorilla Greens, some of our producers, uh, Drizzle, um, Bloom, Kimosabi, and Virgo. I also have, um, for the ones that were here, I gave out a pamphlet of all the producers and retailers. We have a card that we handed out over the weekend at the Powell um, that lists, and that's always gonna be changing because there's more to be changed. Um, Currently, the landscape on Six Nations and the Six Nations Cannabis Commission, every month we, we gain more stores and more producers. There's three key areas that are preventing people from signing up. Thank you. Everybody in the Cannabis Commission, anybody with cannabis industry must do their transactions in cash, in cash only. That makes it very difficult and unsafe for everybody involved in the cannabis industry. Regulations, our regulations need to be updated. 
Um, some, some things in there are not correct and do not reflect um, the current cannabis landscape. Uh, there are some briefing notes that have been forwarded to the chief's office in regards to some of those changes. We have a lot more coming up as well. Yes, Nathan. No. Um, the other is employment and training opportunities. We met with GREAT last week and they are very eager to, um, to work with us to work on some bud tending training programs and also looking at um, on the job training opportunities or any sort of training and employment opportunities. We will be looking at others as well and that's all on the horizon. But again, banking, I've as I said before, I've met with every single bank in Canada, as well as the credit unions. Everybody takes me along and says, oh yeah, 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 we're gonna have something and then nothing happens. Nobody is willing to go against the banking charter for us or any other First Nation. Um, this is prevalent across all First Nations in Ontario and Canada. Uh, the, unless Health Canada, reckon, unless the federal government recognizes our laws and regulation, uh, we won't have banking. The, the outside of the territory, they recognize their laws and regulations for Ontario and any other province or territory, and they can have banking. But because they don't recognize ours, we can't have banking. I'll go on to the next one. Besides our regulations, we also created standard operating procedures or SOPs. These are um, procedures that work uh, when working properly or for the betterment of the retailer, the cultivation and manufacturing operations. There are guidelines that license operations can follow that fill in the gaps, that make it more crystal clear of how to regulate their shops. And uh, most of the cannabis industry in Canada and the US already work with SOP. Our community contribution survey in the uh, we began in April and throughout the extensively in the month of May, we did a community contribution survey. 2% of each and every sale of cannabis products are given back to the community. The survey was conducted to find, uh, to ask the community where they wanted those monies to go. The survey was extensively advertised in newspapers, social media, community events, as part of community awareness and networking efforts. The primary goal was to get that valuable feedback and to um, identify what we, what the community wants our monies to go to. There are um, five areas in particular. Housing was number one. Number two was language and culture. And that's all from the immersion schools to the language programs to the language commission. Uh, food bank was number three. And number four was education. And that was all identified by the community. What we're thinking moving forward, um, that we could do this community survey towards the end of the year, then we would have an, um, a list that we can use our revenue for to give out at the beginning of each year. The, uh, the Everybody was very forthright and we continuously asked people on our Wednesday cannabis conversations for more input of where they want to. Uh, in your package, no problem. Good. I'm oh, sorry, I'll just need a, uh, sorry to, oh yeah, Hazel got it, thanks. Oh, sorry, Hazel, you went back off of mute. I'll need Hazel to go on mute. I need to bring it down here, the volume. Okay. So we have three staff. We have our um, community outreach worker, Chelsea Gibson. We have our marketing development specialist, Emmett Sherlock. And we have our administrator, Jamie Fuller on board. They're all, they all work very hard at, for the commission and I couldn't do what I do without them. Our cannabis industry professional development. We attended the Lyft Cannabis Education Conference and Exhibition, and we also attended the Wiki Cannabis Conference. Attending the professional development specifically for the cannabis um, was an opportunity to increase the knowledge of the cannabis industry. Um, 
find out the trends of cannabis, um, the opportunity of networking, creating partnerships, uh, create uh, expanding the commissioners and the staff because the commissioners also attend the, the exhibitions and conferences with us, uh, learn best practices, um, move, cannabis is focusing more on wellness, health and beauty, learning about the cannabis stigmas and how other people have tried to lower it or different ways of addressing it. Uh, this, this year, it is forecasted that the cannabis market is saturated. Even on our territory, you can see how many are, our businesses are out there. And if there's too much product and not enough consumers, um, they're not gonna do as well if there were fewer. The uh, cannabis uh, revenue takes time. Post-secondary opportunities for cannabis, uh, we found out about those outside of the territory. And we're, um, I, have, I have discussions with Polytech uh, to discuss those for the, on the territory. And we found that a Six Nations product that is cultivated at Six Nations are superior. We do have product that comes in from other territories and that's a little different. The Six Nations uh, Cannabis Commission and the community, we work hand in hand with community agencies, health departments, and we work with community awareness. Uh, we were invited to the Six Nations Cannabis Cup, but the commission decided that that wasn't um, the best uh, venue to go to. We did participate in the Six Nations Power this past weekend and our booth, we partnered with our, one of our partners, the Parents Against Driving High. That was phenomenal. We couldn't have done, we had so many people, we had people lined up at our booth. So they did very, very well. And both the commissioners and the staff worked at that. Um, Parent Against Driving High, who was at our booth this weekend and they also attended the Cannabis Cup. Their primary mission is to promote safe driving practices and discourage driving under the influence of drugs. Their aim is to protect young drivers and the general public from the potentially devastating consequences of impaired driving. Raise awareness about the safe use of cannabis and have a firm stance that drugs should be kept out of the hands of minors. They reflect what we believe in and what we are working at hard at with the Cannabis Commission. Future partnerships, there's education that talks about educating cannabis use on the territories. The Indigenous Cannabis Industry Association, which is from the States, we don't have anything in Canada like that, that I found thus far. The Cannabis Council of Canada speaks on a broad, right across Canada about the um, difficulties that are happening both um, on the territory and off the territory. Uh, both Fanshawe and Niagara College have approached us to work in doing some research and education with them. And again, uh, with great, there's uh, milestones. In April, we started the strategic planning. Uh, and we also did meetings with uh, banks, credit unions, First Nation banks. We um, got the, we gave them the perspective from a retailer and a producer from here to help them understand the difficulties. Um, we, on that note, the one thing there's a Senate committee report that said that uh, we were we just had a few difficulties, a few barriers to move forward, which isn't correct at all. Um, I forward that on to um, the chief's office for more clarification on that. In May, we started the regulations review. There are a number of um, areas in the regulations that need to be updated. Um, they don't accurately reflect today's cannabis industry. In May, we participated in the employment fair. We had a, uh, a very good turnout with that and met lots of people in the community. It's really important for the staff to be out in the community and talking to everyone. Our Wednesday cannabis conversation is an opportunity. They also meet on a monthly basis uh, with all the other agencies. In June, we attended the cannabis conference. And in the end of June, I'm proud to say that we collected our first revenue. So we'll be handing out a check to one of um, our people that have been identified and that'll be going out within the next week. We last one. Our vision. One of the, when we're doing a strategic planning, it was really important for us to have a, mi a mission, a mission statement 
a vision statement, um, identify steps of moving forward in the next five years, because this isn't a short term project. The cannabis industry is just now getting going. The big uh, players in, at the beginning of this only did well because there was a small number of cannabis producers. Now you have hundreds and hundreds of producers and retailers. We want to be the, a progressive leader in education and safety regarding the Six Nations cannabis industry while encouraging sound environmental practices and community improvements through contributions. And that is the end of my presentations. Any questions? Okay, thank you, Nyama, so much, uh, Kathy, for walking us through uh, your second quarter uh, update. Again, sounds like a lot of good work continuing uh, to happen. Uh, I know, just to give you an update quickly, uh, and I know Greg also is uh, our representative at the Chiefs Committee on uh, Economic Development. We attended uh, a meeting this past uh, week, uh, which again is is giving uh, more um, efforts uh, committed to Chiefs uh, of Assembly resolution passed uh, in order of looking at the our the creation of our own bank and what that looks like. Obviously, you know, going back and forth uh, and having the ability uh, of the Chiefs of Ontario. Uh, to do so was a question. However, that would only be in the interim and obviously would go to the rights holders as uh, First Nations territory. So that work, uh, uh, Kathy, as you know, we've discussed is going to continue to on, you know, be ongoing, but obviously, you know, we're still faced with the, the now, you know, it's not happening overnight. So as long as we're continuing to keep uh, moving on the different fronts, I think we'll eventually get to our solution when it comes to banking. Uh, on the regulations as well, I know that we're looking to schedule that with full council just to get those reflected of the changes uh, after your review that you've done. So just to give you an update on those fronts. Um, I see Helen had her hand raised, so I'll go to Helen. Yeah, I got a couple points. First of all, I wanted to mention that Senate, the, the Senate report that Kathy's talking about. The Senate Co Committee on Aboriginal People is making really good points because they're saying that First Nations people are losing out on economic development opportunities with cannabis. So that's something that we really need to highlight when we're talking about cannabis and the banking and everything. We're losing, we're losing out because that banking is stopping us from progressing and, and getting, a, you know, having an opportunity for all of the economic issues that we can have. So that's, a, to me, a good tactic to start raising with the government or whoever is stopping us from doing this. Secondly, um, I think it's important for Kathy, I think, to explain how the money works, given that the Cannabis Commission is dealing with cash, to explain to people what you're doing, how you're doing it. Okay, so I can speak to that when there's uh, application fees and then there's revenue. So 5% of every um, cannabis sale comes back to the commission. Out of that 5%, and it's only 5%, 3% goes to the operating cost and 2% goes back to the community. We want to, as you are all well, well aware of, we have a loan that we have to pay back. Uh, with moving forward, we want to pay the, this is our steps to paying that loan off. Um, as far as the cash coming, the it's really difficult because it's cash. Um, we can't put it in a bank and it's, um, right now the banking industry is looking so hard at our, our own retailers and our own producers. If any, if they get with the um, investigators, they will shut down their bank accounts their personal accounts, their business accounts, their credit cards, registered entire um, education savings plan. We have one one retailer right now. They give they got the letter. They have ninety days to find another bank, and they're going to shut them down. Um, they have four of their kids have registered education savings plan, and they're going to. They said no, you got That's you're done with that. You got to take them out, and they and they come to it to us, and they said this is not right. And I, and I agreed with them, but. What can we do? Because this is happening right here, right now. The same thing, and there's more prevalent 
for First Nations than it is off reserve. And that's not right. Follow up, can I have a follow up? Okay, that, that's good, Kathy, but explain the process, how you're working with finance. That's what I want people to know that the cash isn't just sitting around. No. Process, I, so explain that. No. So we, um, we bring it uh, over. And so finance has that. We will not keep any cash um, at our office whatsoever, nor will I have any of the staff have it. The cash goes into our either revenue account or into the, um, which, for, which is for operating costs. And it, there's a separate account for all the community contributions and all monies will come from there. Does that answer your question, Helen? Yeah, so just to let everybody know, the Cannabis Kisses Commission is right now is working through the council's finance department. So they, they don't keep cash, they're not dealing with cash. If there's any money to be given out, they write, the finance department writes a check. So it's really being closely monitored and whatnot, so. It is. Thanks, Danielle, for that, uh, uh, Helen and and Kathy. And I know uh, we did speak a little bit to this at your last uh, update at finance when uh, Jennifer was on as well to kind of even highlight even further what that process looks like within our own finance uh, department. Uh, I see Hazel has her hand raised. Oh, okay. Uh, are there any uh, looking to any further questions or comments for Kathy? Okay, uh, Kathy, I, if I, if, uh, I I'll just need you. Okay. To okay. Sorry, Mark. Can you turn that page? I just need what call. Kathy, oh, I just sorry. wanted. To... Oh, just sorry. One second, Hazel. Uh, we'll have to get Kathy on mute as well. And then, sorry, Helen. Did you have further comment? Just really quickly. Well, I just wanted to say we need we need to hear from the, the general the, the retailer that Kathy's talking about, where they're an obvious all his money, his education plans, and everything like that. We need to hear from these people, yes, so we can gather more information as to what they are actually doing to us. I think it's really important they're willing to meet with us and say this is what's happening to me. That's I agree terrible that. if they're cutting all that if they're cutting them out of all that's awful i agree thanks uh thanks that helen so we'll work with kathy to uh to get more details and information of that person uh back over to you hazel yes i would just like to ask the question if um the need of uh cannabis commission can't get a baking system is that the same way for all those off reserve who are in the cannabis business uh, for some of the newer ones, they have a hard time. But, but for some of the those. newer cannabis uh, stores, uh, mostly the retailers, not the producers, they do have a difficult time opening up. And that's why it's almost pushing more people to go into the black market or what they call the gray market or red market um, because they can't get a banking account. And same with if they hear, if there's, they have anything to do with the cannabis industry and then the investigate the banking investigators will go in and then they'll shut down their accounts so it's not just on, it's more so on first nations because they believe that they don't recognize our cannabis law and regulations but it's even off off the territory they're doing that with the newer ones opening up and so that's why you'll see some of the big cannabis um players in ontario are declaring bankruptcy this year and there'll be more as the year progresses I have another comment to make. So then the government um, should be trying to help everybody with uh, the cannabis because they legalized it. So now they've got this big uh, event and nobody can really use it to its fullest extent. That, that's really crazy that they won't accept the money at the banks. It just makes sense to me. Thanks. Yeah, see, and, and and exactly, Hazel, to that to that point is is where it's always been the anti money laundering 
um, you know, that I think has always been the challenge that we're faced against, the AML rigs often referred to. Uh, that's that's basically what's the blocking barrier uh, as to why a majority of people within this industry are unable to open an account. Uh, so again, we've been working through those pieces, but that's a, that's a lot of work through FinTrack, uh, you know, looking at the legislation from uh, the federal lens, because you're right, Canada obviously did this, but they did this without any consultation with with communities within First Nations uh, territories. Um, and so again, we're we're now feeling the effects and impacts of the of that not being involved from from the, from the outset. Uh, Kathy, yes, I think every single retailer is induced around the territory. Sorry. Is feeling that when you have to deal in cash all the time, whoops, they they can't get benefits for their employees. So there's no EI, there's no pension, there's no anything for the retailers. There's for the producers. They um, some are using it different ways, but they can't they can't use a bank. They can't file taxes. They can't like all these other things that come from it. So them now, and there's probably gonna be more as the weeks come by where they're going to be looking at the banking um, investigators, looking at people. What if the same was to happen for elected council? Like you guys are dealing with the cannabis commission. How dare you? Like th those are really scary prospects. And for our people that we're advocating for, that's not fair to them because the government, federal government doesn't recognize our own laws and regulations, but they do recognize Ontario, they do recognize the feds. So what's the difference? And because I called the banks out and said, I, I think that's racist. Why are we different? Our, our laws and regs, given they need to be revised, but they are very similar to Ontario and Canada. That's how they develop them. So what makes us less than? No. Exactly. Good question. Thanks for that, Kathy. Uh, back over to you, Helen. Well, just in thinking about that, too, when it comes to the point where we may be able to start donating, uh, you know, spending the cannabis money or donating to different people or community uh, organizations and whatever, are they going to go back on that organization for taking the cannabis money? Like, this could be far-reaching. These investigators, I hope... Anybody ever sees them on the reserve, I hope they kick them off. <laughs> but it could be far reaching if they're getting that desperate where if we give money to someone, cannabis money distributed, because we said we're gonna give some to the community, uh, could come back on that organization and say, you took cannabis money. So blah, 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 you know. Yeah, and that's stuff that we'll have to further, again, research out and with Kathy's uh, help from her team on communication as well with the, obviously with the community, but with the retailers and producers. So again, this is this is uh, an issue that has been ongoing. We've been making, uh, you know, little strides of progress, but our hands are tied at this point uh, until we start to work on the bigger pieces to this whole issue, which is again, the regulation meeting with Canada and as well, uh, what we've been trying to do through the Tucson Ontario. So there's many fronts happening. It's just not happening as quick enough uh, as we'd like them to. Are there any further questions or comments for Kathy? Okay, I'm not seeing any at this point. Again, there is, a, we are looking for the next session follow-up uh, to again, look to the revisions of the regulations of the law itself and to get those um, further discussed and decided on next steps for the recommendations on those regs. So that'll be forthcoming and as well, again, have the ongoing issues uh, with the banking. Uh, so looking to, if there's not any further questions or comments, sorry, Helen, I seen you went off mute. Did you oh, have further? Yeah. No, I just wanted to, in terms of cannabis, the cannabis cup that they just held recently, uh, I seen some, some Facebook posts. And they allowed little children to be there. They were running around there with all these people smoking pot and everything. And 
they should have had it 19 and over, but there was children there. So I didn't think that was right. I We okay. didn't attend. So I don't know if there was or not. Um, that was a decision that the commission made. And uh, so a I'm decision. not- Thank you. Okay, thanks. Uh, thanks for that comment, uh, Helen and, and Kathy. I'm going to at this point look to any further questions or comments for Kathy. Okay, I'm not seeing or hearing any at this point. So there is a recommendation on our agendas. Again, it reads that we accept the Six Nations Cannabis Commission second quarter report as information. Looking to a mover and seconder for that. Moved by oh. Helen, sure, seconder, seconded by Sherry Lynn. Again, I'll call for any final questions or comments. Okay, seeing or hearing none, all in favor? Any opposed? Seeing or hearing none, motion is carried. Well, thank you, Nyawa, so much, uh, Kathy, for joining us this morning and providing us with this update. Uh, we have more updates to come again on your your next steps. So I want to uh, say again, Nyawa, thank you for joining us this morning. Uh, and we're going to continue moving along with our agenda here at this point. That leads us in to the political liaison minutes of July 10th. I'll move it, Sherry Lynn. Moved by Sherry Lynn. Is there a seconder? I'll second. Seconded by Kiri. Are there any further questions or comments in relation to the minutes? Okay, seeing or hearing none, all in favor? Any opposed? Seeing or hearing none, motion is carried. Uh, the next item we have on our agendas is just a uh, email ratification uh, that was uh, over our emails uh, to have a total of $6,000, which would equate to $1,500 each for our Six Nations athletes named uh, Kara Sky, Chloe Bombery, Tess Squire, and as well as Kyla Miller for the purpose of traveling to participate in the Canadian Nationals Tournament in Calgary, Alberta, from August 8th until the 13th, and that the source of funds from the OFNLP, as well as the donation fund, be utilized. So this is, again, was going over emails. I'll look to a mover in seconder, moved by Audrey, seconder, second by Helen. Are there any further questions or comments? Seeing or hearing none, all in favor? Any opposed? Seeing or hearing none, motion is carried. Continuing on with the agenda, the next item is from our consultation and accommodation team, also known or referred to as CAP. So I'll look to, this is again, the activity report, uh, which is for June uh, and as well as July. So I want to pass it over at this point in time uh, to our CAP team to give us some high uh, level uh, overview of the two monthly activity reports. We all shift over to Peter. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Good morning Chief and Council. Um, yeah, if you have the report in front of you, uh, you'll see there's uh, been a couple new relationships uh, with a small uh, power company and a Toronto organization, uh, which will hope uh, will result in financial opportunities. Um, there's a couple of things I just wanted to highlight uh, in Brantford. Um, one, they're doing uh, an extension of the Wayne Gretzky uh, Parkway uh, going north. Uh, there's also uh, a couple new uh, subdivisions uh, that uh, live communities uh, have informed us about, um, as well as uh, a bit of a talk about an existing one, uh, Burkitt's Lane. 
a bit uh, closer to home. Um, you'll see, I think the last uh, couple entries uh, in the report are uh, about developments uh, in the Hagersville area, which we're looking at uh, financial accommodations for. Um, I don't know if uh, if there's any questions from council about those items or uh, other items included in the report. Okay, thanks. Uh, thanks for that, Peter. So looking to open the floor up for any questions or comments on the June and July activity report on CAP. I see Helen has her hand raised. I just want to make sure that we're, as Peter said, trying to get financial contributions of some sort. Because that's in our land. We should be just getting crazy. Yeah. The housing in Bradford that's on our land, the projects they're doing, they don't even care to consult with us or even think about consulting with us. They're just going ahead with everything like it. Like we're, you know, we're not important, but that's our land. Surprise that. I don't know whether we could have stopped development on our lands while the court cases were not, but I don't know whether Lonnie could say anything about that, but we should have at least <laughs> the development that's close to home. We should be stopping development in Bradford until we settle the land claim. <laughs> I know we can't do it all up and down the Hollerman track. It'd be nice if we could, but we need to meet with Bradford Council. We're getting millions in all of these development fees and everything, and we're not getting anything. Well, well, some of the things that Peter said might, like one in Hagersville, and well, that's not Bradford, but some of the projects are going to may result in money, but the majority of them aren't. They don't even bother with us. The developers don't bother with us and the Bradford Council don't bother with us when they're giving out these permits. And that's where we should be hitting them when they're giving out these permits. We need to find Bradford. We want some of that money. Some of that development permit money. We get millions. Anyway, that's just my concern. Okay, thanks, Nyawa, for that, Helen. And the meeting is in queue. I know we did touch base from uh, for Christopher and I with the uh, looking, I know we talked about the Tri-Council, obviously not sure if the county, um, and Brant County as well, uh, we feel should be involved in these conversations. Uh, obviously, the city of Brantford, I think we need to do more work on as, as well. So we're looking to see, to schedule that um, in the very near future. Uh, so that that is upcoming in terms of some of the political pieces that we can push uh, on this front. I had uh, Sherry Lynn, Greg, and then I seen Taylor uh, had her hand raised. Let's start with Sherry Lynn. Um, pretty much I agree with everything that Helen said, and this has been going on for a while. So I just hope that we start making a big stance of what Helen is saying, but I think also that we, we stop allowing all this. And we've been talking about this for years. And the quicker we can have a meeting and the quicker that we can um, tell them that it's unacceptable, the, the better, um, you know, ASAP, because I don't know, I keep, we keep reading these <laughs> um, articles, the 400 and something million, they're all excited up in Brantford and Helen's right, you know, we don't get it, we didn't get anything. So um, I think we really need to, to get moving on this and for us to make a, a big stance on this and um, what we're going to allow and not allow. It's time. Okay, thank you, Nyama, for that. Uh, Sherilyn, do agree as well. Over to you, uh, Greg. Uh, yeah, uh, thanks, Peter, for that report. Uh, yeah, and I think I discussed it with Taylor uh, a while back about um, being a little bit more forceful in the, in the uh, correspondence that we uh, that we give. I think that uh, I don't know if they're aware of our court case or the implications of, of that. Uh, I think we should make them aware. And that, uh, yeah, if they go ahead and make these hundreds of millions. Uh, it's going to, you know, it's still going to impact them and it's going to impact uh, the court case as well. So I, I think they should be made aware that, uh, you know, that there is a, 
a court case going on and uh, there's going to have some ramifications uh, down the road. Anyway, that's just my comments. Thanks. Okay, thanks. Uh, thanks for that, Greg. And I know just in talking with uh, the mayor, they are well aware of our court case uh, ongoing. Uh, just a little FYI to that. Uh, sorry, just really quickly before I go to Taylor, I I want to uh, check in with Hazel. I just wanted to ask if, um, <clears throat> with those developments that are occurring in Brantford, and um, is that figure or the amounts that they are taking on in Brantford there, does that become a part of our litigation? Is those figures already contained in our litigation or is this over and above the litigation? Just a question. I'll look to uh, Lonnie or Phil to see if I can get some assistance uh, with that question. Okay, I, okay, I'll try and answer some of these things. You know, um, this is this has been going on. I think we've got to have council. You got to make a decision: Are we going to take them on, or are we going to try and work out agreements with them? I think we're into the process of, of going towards litigations. We had it with the city of Brantford on the legal duty to consult and be accommodated because of finger points between Canada. Uh, between Ontario and the municipalities, who is in charge? Whose obligation is it to do this? Quite a while back, we were into that process, but with the cost and everything, the council would just, it was put on hold, you know? So we get going and then politics change and they try and work out, they have the tri-county meetings. And the reality is, I think you need to provide guidance are you in here for the fight? And it's going to be a long one and let's get the litigation. And I, I totally agree. They're just going to go on until they're stopped. And uh, is it covered in our litigation? The overall big litigation, the compensation will be, but the houses, the houses will be in place. Let's put it that way. Uh, if you want to abs absolutely stop all development, the, probably the only way is to raise about a, a lot of uh, uncertainty in the courts on this matter. And that would boil down to the, the legal duty to consult and be accommodated for using our lands that are under litigation. There's all kinds of avenues we can use for this, but it has to be done legally. And the appetite of previous counsel was just put it on hold and let's see where we go. Let's try and work things out. With Six Nations has always been uh, attempting to resolve these through negotiations, but uh, they just go nowhere. Political dynamics of municipalities, the Ontario government changes. As you all know, the, the, when the Ford government got in, it was just run, rap, you know, just run with it, develop wherever you can, you know. How were the green belt restrictions? Just keep going. And before we did have a bit of a year of the Liberal provincial government, but in the end, they're all the same. So I think this council's got to got to make their mind up. Are we in to the, to fight them and take them on and stay with it? That's the issue. It's expensive, very expensive. So those are my comments because we've been down this avenue, well, in my lifetime, about <laughs> ten times. We're on again, off again. Okay, now now for that. Uh, Phil, for your comments as well. Um, and again, we'll go, we could further discuss uh, our next steps. I think a lot of this uh, discussion as well is uh, a little bit of strategy, and I think that needs to happen amongst uh, just council as well. Uh, Taylor, and then over to uh, Peter. I was just coming to answer to Helen's question, well, everyone's question. I know the CAP team, particularly Lonnie, uh, continuously brings up to Brantford that we do want to talk about accommodation and he also brings up the litigation. And I know uh, the the, rep, the representatives from Brantford have committed to uh, bringing this up their higher ups, uh, though we have not heard anything from that, that we do want to talk about accommodation and not just 
a part um, for like individual projects, but as a whole in Brantford, particularly with the new, um, uh, the, the, with the legal pre presence out there that Lonnie has reminded them on that the municipalities uh, may have a, a, um, a more of a duty to accommodate than they originally thought. So, um, so yes, they 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 should be they they should they they should be aware as as it's constantly mentioned. Okay, thank you, Nawa, for that, uh, Taylor, uh, Peter, and then over to Audrey. Just uh, briefly uh, in response to Greg's uh, comments, uh, so under instruction from uh, Lonnie and Taylor, uh, all uh, initial letters about development applications in the Haldeman uh, tract uh, refer to the litigation. Thanks. Okay, thank you, Nawa, for that, uh, Peter, as well. Uh, over to you, Audrey. Yeah, thanks, Mark. I, I believe what uh, Phil is saying. I think we do have to make that determination of what the council wants to do. And I, for one, would like to challenge this. And I hope that all council will, will feel the same as well. But uh, elections are coming up in November. So I think we have to make a package for the new com council coming in. And hopefully there's many of them still here will continue on. But until we speak up, until we say enough's enough, they won't know. They'll just keep pushing the envelope until they get more and more development and they, because we don't push back as strong as we should be, they're going to take, continue to take advantage of Six Nations. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Now for that, uh, Audrey. So I think, again, just out of this report, uh, Council, we have some further uh, discussion points uh, to have and to make further decisions as to, uh, you know, what Phil's, Phil's comments on, on what our next steps uh, will be, and I think it's going to be a stronger uh, next step, so we can further further uh, decide those points again as we uh, strategize and have these opportunities to discuss strategy. Are there any further questions or comments in relation to the activity report for the months of June and July? Okay, I'm not seeing or hearing any. Uh, so at this point, I will look to a mover and seconder to accept uh, the two reports as information at this time. Moved by Audrey, seconder, seconded by Greg. Again, looking to any further questions or comments to the motion. Okay, I'm not seeing or hearing any at this point. Therefore, I'll go to the vote. All in favor? Any opposed? Seeing or hearing in motion is carried. Okay, Nyawa to uh, to the team for providing us with your activity reports uh, for the last uh, June uh, and July. Okay, Council, we're going to continue moving along here with our agenda. The next uh, uh, recommendation you'll see on our agendas is in relation to the uh, political appointment uh, to the uh, Chiefs of Ontario uh, Employment Table Working Group. So as you'll notice within one of the whereases, uh, our Director of Ontario Work, Sandy Porter, has been sitting as our technical uh, representative, again, for Six Nations, uh, in that uh, the next uh, whereas uh, uh, reads that we are at this point uh, where we'll need to uh, nominate a political representatives. Uh, I know obviously it's going to be a short time, given that we are uh, just shy of about three, four months of the election. However, I think it's still important that all the work continues as best as, as long as we can uh, to continue to, uh, again, package this as well so that the new council is is up to speed with all of the uh, files and where we are in each of them. I have Sandy online and good morning, Sandy, uh, wanting to give him opportunity uh, to provide any further comments uh, to this motion. Good morning, Sandy. Morning, morning, Chief. Uh, yeah, so I guess um, one of the things um, that I will say um, is the um, uh, PC government, um, they've been uh, talking about um, how they deliver employment services in Ontario for quite some time. So in uh, now, uh, and that goes back to the Drummond report of 2000, I think it was 12, they've been talking about this audit reports in the past. Uh, so now, uh, I think it was August um, 19th, where 
Ontario uh, made the announcement, the, actually the Ministry of um, Labor, Immigration, Training and Skills Development. So they're, they're proceeding now and um, they're making some changes. Um, what they're doing is they're um, making changes in terms of um, their structure, uh, their delivery structure, how they deliver uh, employment services. So they do have um, these prototypes that they established and um, they're developing those pro uh, prototypes. Um, I think they're getting close to um, having all catchment areas in Ontario covered by these, they call them services to manager system. So, but First Nations are exempt and that's a good thing. Um, so the Chiefs of Ontario did receive some funds uh, from the ministry and um, <clears throat> they've um, had some meetings. There is an ALCC resolution um, that was, uh, and basically the resolution is, uh, it just says demand that um, the therefore be resolved um, demand that Ontario confirm its prior commitment to a direct government to government relationship with First Nations and its prior commitment that service system managers shall not have employment service delivery or manager responsibility on reserve and, and further commit to expanding the exclusion uh, to ODSP recipients who are resident on reserve. So after that resolution, I believe to what I understand there's a gentleman, gentleman uh, in uh, at the Chiefs of Ontario office named Arvin. So he's kind of like <clears throat> um, handles the, um, the this particular file at the Chiefs of Ontario level. So the leadership council is involved. We've um, had some technical meetings um, on on this, and a lot of it is, uh, of course, you know, like standard. Um, looked at the terms of reference and um, consultant fact finding up to this point. Uh, identifying some concerns about um, a First Nation driven approach and our needs and our challenges. So it, it's a good thing that um, First Nations are exempt. They are, it has impacted um, the, the delivery of Ontario works in municipalities. And, you know, I think that we need to, um, whatever model in the end, I believe um, once the model is, is put together for First Nations, well, it has to recognize the differences in First Nations communities, the geographic differences and the different structures that are out there in First Nations communities. Um, you know, you got the flying communities. Um, there's a, there's communities in the south. So everybody has uh, some unique challenges. So I think uh, from what I'm hearing, that's the um, uh, main concern is that uh, it, it, it'd be a First Nation driven approach and that the ministry or the Ontario government just it's engaged, I guess you can say, in a different process than they've engaged with municipalities. I don't even know whether there was any engagement with the municipalities. I think that I don't think that they had a choice. Um, the the PC government just went in and railroaded. So um, the uh, there is some some changes um, that has happened in municipalities that we don't necessarily want to see happen in, in First Nations communities. I think one of the biggest things too is that. The Ontario government, uh, I don't think that they really understand, um, um, I guess you can say, what the needs and challenges are in First Nations communities. They do in municipalities, and that's why they're proceeding uh, the way they're proceeding in municipalities. But it's it's an opportunity, the way I look at it, uh, for First Nations to voice their concerns, voice their objections, and stop uh, the the old way of doing business. And that's just... You know the ministry, whether that's the federal or provincial government, designing programs, and then uh, without really knowing uh, what would work and what's best for First Nations communities, you know that kind of that kind of approach, I think, needs to stop. And um, they, some of the policy analysts may not even be really knowledgeable about First Nations communities. So I, I'm I'm encouraged. Bottom line for me, I'm encouraged that um, we are exempt. All First Nations in, in Ontario are exempt. And um, we have an opportunity to look at um, what would um, work best for us and what kind of flexibility that we need uh, in First Nations communities. Okay, thank you, Nyawa, so much, uh, Sandy, for providing us with uh, with your overview uh, to this uh, to this motion and recommendation. Uh, I'm going to open the floor up for this at this point for further questions uh, and comments. I'll start with Greg, and then over to Helen. Greg, you have the floor. 
Uh, yeah. Hi, Sandy. Uh, thanks for all your good work. Um, and uh, yeah, quite informative meeting that we had uh, the last just last week. That was very good. Um, my question is, is that, uh, yeah, this exemption is, is good. But uh, do your suggestions, do they do they carry any weight like under this under this this government that's in place now? Do you think that they've been a bit more flexible to um, our needs or our recommendations? I think in, in um, my line of work, um, the uh, uh, social assistance, yes. Um, the um, uh, ministry, uh, with respect to um, social assistance, at least, um, we are, we have a table, um, technical table, uh, where we have an opportunity to speak directly with uh, some of the senior staff within the ministry. So it's good to have a table like that uh, to be able to raise some of our concerns. Um, also, with the uh, employment part, uh, they've exempted uh, First Nations, uh, and there's a, a, a technical table set up there. And I believe that uh, the next, I think that uh, the last meeting that we talked about is having a Chiefs Committee on Employment. So the, and, and I'm not sure whether all the uh, PTOs uh, uh, named uh, a political rep to this, um, um, what do they call it? um table at the chiefs of ontario um but um i've been sitting there and, and participating and that's why we're here today is to to look at a, a political rep um right now um there's a lot of technical um um uh, exchange of information but getting back to your your question greg um yeah i think that um at least in our in in this particular area um, the ministry is uh, willing to have some engagement and not just, uh, you know, arbitrarily make decisions um, and then just expect First Nations to adopt and ad adjust uh, to the decisions that they're making. Because yeah. uh, just to follow up, Chief, just a comment. Yeah, I was just thinking from a yeah, political level, because we do have the opportunity sometimes to uh, to bump into Doug Ford. And, uh, you know, we uh, don't have much time when we do. And a lot of times uh, the important issues have to have to be raised. And uh, this uh, I think this is one of them. But uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you, Sandy. Yeah, just one last comment to that, Greg. Yeah, I think whenever you get a chance to rub shoulders with um, the um, provincial um, politicians or, or federal politicians, you know, I, I, I think it's from a, a political perspective, I think it's really, really important um, to advise these individuals that um, uh, a dictated approach isn't the best approach. I think um, they need to talk with us. They need to to engage with us, and they need to hear our voice. So, anytime you you can, any uh, counselors can do that. I think um, that's a good approach, and that's a message that that we got to get. We know um, in the past um, when Ontario Works was uh, first introduced. Um, there wasn't much um, consideration, I don't think, by the uh, Harris government. He just come in and railroaded things and made decisions. And that was his blueprint uh, when he got elected. And that's what he did. Um, and I don't think that there was much uh, consideration um, given to some of the First Nations um, uh, challenges and, and needs and how appropriate those changes are for us. Okay, now Sandy, for your for your responses, uh, over to you, Helen. Yeah, I would like to sit on this table if I can, because employment and training is my background. Um, secondly, I, I'm still, I guess, confused with this employment and prosperity table that Grand Chief uh, Joel Abram brought up at the coup coup conference. Prior, the government wanted to set up a prosperity table, prosperity and economic development table. Somehow it morphed into an employment and prosperity table. So I'm really concerned with that word employment in there. I don't know where it's leading. I don't know whether it has anything to do with this, what Sandy's talking about with the transformation of because uh, one of the there was only I think according to a letter that Steve Williams had written, there was only three catchment areas that hadn't been identified yet, and Toronto was one of them. So I don't know if this table's got something to do with that or not. 
I've been trying to get information from Joel Abrams on this, but I haven't been able to do that yet. So it was really brief. If you remember, Mark, it was really brief, the uh, school meeting, and he didn't even have a um, um, PowerPoint to show people what he was. He was just reading from a paper. So I'm a little bit confused and concerned with that employment and prosperity table. But I would like to sit there. I mean, I worked in employment and training for years, so I hope I can get council agrees for me to be there. Okay, thanks, uh, Nyawa, for that, Helen. I, I, I also uh, do recall uh, uh, that time at the Chiefs of Ontario conference, as you uh, may remember, I had to, I got up and spoke because obviously we want to uh, make sure there's no impacts happening, mm -hmm. say, for example, Grand River Employment and Training and whatever that funding looks like as well. So I know the other the other issue, I think, with that front of the prosperity table is is looking at the why uh, Chiefs of Ontario, you know, it was it was really Doug Ford's idea uh, at the at the end of uh, when Rosa and Archibald was regional chief. And I think when Hare was elected, it was this kind of, uh, you know, rolled uh, snowballed into what it is now. But I do also share those same concerns, and I know we've voiced them as well at the assembly. Um, and I think you know, because right off the kick, it's like the provincial government has twenty-five million dollars for this table, but yet can uh, you know look at uh, other areas that are really suffering and can utilize additional funds. Uh, you know, so it's it's always uh, interesting to see the interests. I think of who's in power of the time. Obviously, we know, uh, you know, economic development is, I think, an interest of our premier. And as we see with what he's trying to do with the green belt and everything else that we've mentioned, you know, just further looks to uh, why we need to continue to advocate and have our voices, uh, you know, very strong when it comes uh, to this uh, to this matter. Because I think at the end of the day, I think it was Chief Duckworth uh, from Caldwell First Nation who shared the same sentiments of. You know, we have to also be very cautious of the Chiefs of Ontario and the role that they play within the economic development realm and uh, employment and prosperity, uh, because I think a lot of the times it it it's not the role of Chiefs of Ontario. So I think that's something that we also need to get further clarification on as well. I just want to also really quickly uh, acknowledge uh, some of uh, Nathan's comments in the chat. Again, agreeing with Helen, whenever Chief of Ontario does get into the employment and economic uh, development area, it usually leads to issues, uh, which we're obviously seeing now. So she, uh, sorry, Nathan also is concerned around uh, the lack of clarity of the mandates, uh, again, which will be hard to support uh, from his perspective. So I want to acknowledge, uh, again, Nathan's comments in the chat. Do agree as well, so we'll continue to keep our pulse uh, on this. And at this point, I'm not seeing or hearing any other interest from council uh, to be our political rep on uh, this table. So other than Helen, I'll look to see if we can get a motion uh, as uh, on our agenda to have Helen named as our political rep uh, to uh, this working group. It's moved by Audrey. Is there a seconder? I'll second, Shirley. Seconded by Sherry Lynn. Further questions and comments over to you, Sandy. One last comment. Um, Chief, I, one of the things um, that I've been communicating um, whenever I'm attending the meetings or, or speaking with the rep from Chiefs of Ontario, and this is really important as far as I'm concerned, we, um, there has been people who have attended meetings um, uh, the Chiefs of Ontario is involved, but I, my message is, at the end of the day, it needs to be our leadership that decides on whatever model is going to be put on the table, nobody else. So that meaning that it's, it's the Six Nations of the Grand River Elected Council who will be making that decision down the road, you know, I think um, it'll, it'll, it'll eventually go to uh, probably an all Ontario Chiefs conference where they're going to consider uh, whatever model gets put together. But uh, I think that needs to be echoed uh, and that uh, needs to be communicated that it's our leadership who's ultimately makes the decision. That's that's really good. And we do appreciate that, Sandy, that you're continuing to share that message, because I know a lot of the times at these tables, you know, when it comes to our technical representatives, we know that they're still for their bigger decisions. It's just we're relying on our techs to be able to say, okay, you know, what is the best 
uh, you know, move for us at Six Nations when it comes to the decision. So do appreciate your messaging, Sandy. Uh, are there any further questions or comments in relation to the motion? Okay, it's been moved and seconded. I'm going to go to the vote. All in favor? Any opposed? Seeing or hearing none, motion is carried again to be have uh, Helen uh, named as our political rep for this working group. I'm going to look to get a motion to waive second reading. Moved by Audrey. Seconder. I'll second, Sherlyn. Seconded by Sherry Lynn. All in favor? Any opposed? Seeing or hearing a motion is carried. Well, thank you Nyawa, so much again, uh, Sandy, for joining us this morning uh, and giving us uh, the update on this. And we'll look to you again, uh, uh, our further updates from our uh, political rep on this file. Okay, thank you, have a good day. All right, Nyawa, Sandy, you as well. Yeah. Keep up the great work. Thank Thanks. you. Thanks, yeah. Okay, uh, council, we're gonna continue moving along with our agendas. I know there's been a, a couple of councilors uh, reports attendance. I just wanna just really quickly get to the scheduling piece as well. I know we have more uh, political updates, but they're more strategy, which Christopher and I will walk through in our next uh, session. However, I wanna move to, if I can quickly, to the scheduling portion. Uh, this one is an important one as we've been gearing up, uh, getting prepared for the uh, 2023 AMO conference, which I know uh, we've been a part of for quite some time. We've been actually making great strides uh, at AMO. Um, I know last year was attended by myself, Christopher, as well as uh, Darren and Trevor were there. And at this time, looking to see if we could have at least uh, two counselors uh, attend this conference with our team going again being held in London, Ontario uh, on August 20th. Uh, we do have at this point, I believe, six uh, meetings confirmed. The Solicitor General, the Attorney General, the Minister of Environment, uh, the Minister of Indigenous Affairs, uh, as well as the Minister of Health. So those meetings have been confirmed as of uh, right now, we are looking to hear back from two more, and then that will make a total of eight meetings uh, confirmed for uh, the AMO conference. So at this point in time, I'm looking to have two counselors named to attend the conference with myself, Christopher, and as well as I believe Trevor is coming in and need to check in with Darren to see if he'd be attending uh, that or not. So opening the floor up for uh, questions, comments. Um, let's start with Greg. Over to Audrey, Sherry Lynn, Nathan, and Phil. Greg, you have the floor. Uh, yeah, uh, it's good to have them all together all one day. Uh, and I think a lot of good points could be raised. Um, uh, if no one, uh, no one else wants to go, I'll go. I'll go. I'll put my name in if, if uh, to attend. <laughs> Okay, thank you, Nyawa, for that, Greg. And if there is further interest as well, then I'm sure we could squeeze another counselor if that is the case. Uh, Audrey? Yes, I'm interested in attending as well. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Nyawa, for that. Audrey, Sherry Lynn? Um, are, can we check the date on that? I was just checking my schedule, and the 20th is a Sunday. Okay, that might be a typo. We'll confirm the date on that, uh, Sherry Lynn. Thank you for that. Oh yeah. So if so, I'm I'm interested. I just need the date to make okay. sure. Okay. Thanks for that, uh, Sherry Lynn. We'll get that uh, clarified. Uh, the next one, uh, Helen. Did you have your hand raised? Oh, sorry, Phil. Uh, yes. I'm just commenting as to. Uh... Perhaps for the people you're meeting, Attorney General, and uh, the legal duty to consult and accommodate, uh, I would I would recommend you take Lonnie with you to represent. Uh, he he has some of the key things on issues that actually just came up earlier in the day about whose re legal responsibility and then as well as our court case. He's sure. probably the best equipped to handle those matters. Just my recommendation. Okay. It's my suggestion, I guess. Okay, no problem. Thanks, Phil, for that. And that's the really the goal is to really build out the team in order to prep for these meetings and sessions and really highlighting what points we want to raise with each of these ministers um, as well. If you recall last year, uh, I had got up and in, in fact, I wasn't 
uh, uh, able to even get up and speak as I wasn't a AMO member per se, as we know we are not a municipality. However, there's many First Nations issues and in, in communities surrounding uh, these municipalities that have many issues. Um, and so I got up and spoke in front of the whole uh, AMO conference, about 1,200 delegates uh, and the full cabinet as well. Uh, and to say, well, if there's First Nations issues, where are all the First Nations people? <laughs> you know, we were one of the only nations there representing. And I think it's an opportunity where, you know, we have government all, like Greg's point, all on one one shot and one, uh, you know, place and time to be able to secure all of these meetings. And so that's something where we've been taking advantage, advantage of for many years. Uh, I know we've taken, obviously, Mike, for example, our public works director, uh, a part of this as well. I know his, one of his big ones is Roma. So, you know, it's really, uh, I think, valuable uh, and beneficial when we are at this conference because uh, it gives us the ability, again, to further raise our issues in which uh, we've uh, been discussing some of them online this morning. So, Phil, to answer your question, yes, no problem. I think Lonnie is definitely a, a person to also bring apart as the team as we uh, go and meet with these uh, minis excuse me, government officials. Uh, over to you, Helen. I'll, I'll put a motion to the floor that uh, whoever wants to attend, attend. I think the more counselors we have, the better. Especially Agreed. if you're having that many meetings with the different ministers. Agreed. Okay, so what we'll do then, as I've heard three names of interest, I have Audrey, Greg, as well as Sherry Lynn. Sherry Lynn, just to confirm, that is the date. So it is on the Sunday that we would be traveling uh, the night in and for our meetings that day. So just want to confirm with Sherry Lynn if that date works for you. Um, yeah, that's, yeah, that's good. Okay, thanks for that. So we have a motion on the floor for Audrey, Greg, Sherry Lynn, along with our team as well, uh, to attend the AMO conference. Further question, or sorry, I'll look to a seconder. And Lonnie, to... put Lonnie's name on there too. Yeah, so Lonnie's part of that as well when I reference team. <clears throat> Is there any further questions or comments? I'll look to a seconder. I have a question, Mark. Okay, sorry. I'm just going to go to a second there first. I'll look to questions, comments. I'll second that. Seconded by Kerry. Thank you for that. Over, back over to you, Hazel. Yeah, I was just going to say, like, do you specifically have to have your name in this resolution to go? Or if you're able to go, can you just attend as a counselor? Uh, so we will need to get you registered. Uh, so there's some registration as well. Uh, and so we would need your name to be a part of the resolution. Oh. If there if there is an opportunity where you're able to join, say, last minute and we're able to squeeze you in, um, there's no problem. And you can attend the minister, our private minister meetings uh, as opposed to just the conference. Add my name to Okay, so it's looking to the mover and seconder to add Hazel's name to the list. I see no opposition. Thank you for that, Kerry, Helen. I don't see any opposition. Looking to any further questions or comments? Okay, seeing or hearing none, I'm going to go to the vote. All in favor? Any opposed? Seeing or hearing that motion is carried. Motion to waive second reading. Moved by Helen. Seconder. Yep. Seconded by Kerry to waive second reading. All in favor? Any opposed? Seeing or hearing that motion is carried. Okay, thank you, Council Nawa, for that. We'll work with our team to get uh, your uh, booking and travel and so forth. So now for that, uh, the next item I'm going to look to is just a reminder that we are, will be on council summer break from July 31st uh, through until August 4th. Again, uh, just a reminder to community that council did decide uh, to break up the summer break uh, over the two weeks. So that would be again the first week happening July 31st 
through August 4th. And then the second council summer break would be August 28th through till September 5th. So no meetings will be taking place during this time. And again, just wanted to have that as a reminder. Uh, also, just really quickly, we are uh, prior to adjourning here. We are uh, looking to, as we had brought this up, I think Sherry Lynn brought this up in terms of our NAG athletes. Uh, we've had a number of athletes uh, do tremendous work over their time at the North American Indigenous Games in Halifax. Uh, we want our athletes uh, to help. Uh, welcome them back and to showcase some of their uh, medals earned. So we are working with our event planner to get uh, our uh, our NAG athletes recognition. So I don't know. We're working on the details of that. So whether it be a fire truck parade, I think that's kind of what we're leading towards through the village and then further uh, the community hall uh, for some pizza and wings. So that's up upcoming. Uh, as well as uh, we will uh, be working with our comms team, you're going to see an event come up uh, with Mr. Brandon Montour. We're doing a follow up uh, to have him uh, come to the community hall uh, for uh, community engagement. Uh, and again, also as part of uh, Brandon's event, which is going to be happening August 3rd. It's a Thursday. I know it's happening during our break. So if anyone is available, to attend that, it will be at the community hall from five till seven. Uh, that will also be part of Brandon uh, doing a check presentation. As you recall, uh, council did a fundraiser, which uh, did uh, sell the signs, the lawn signs for Brandon Mator during his time uh, as he was going for the Stanley Cup. Obviously, we know that wasn't in his favor. However, his uh, work uh, still is uh, commendable and uh, want to recognize all of his work uh, throughout the year. And so part of that is a, a check presentation uh, to the minor sports organization on the funds raised uh, of those lawn signs. And so that's going to be an exciting time as well. So if you can include that in your calendars, that's going to be happening August 3rd. Uh, from five till seven. Uh, looking to Helen and then Sherry Lynn. Yeah, in terms of the NAG, we should be recognizing the other students. We've had a few teams winning the provincial championships. Yes, and I think as well, Helen, to add, we also have the Six Nations Rebels. I know there's a lot of teams, even our under uh, 19, under nine, there's a lot of ages under 16. A lot of our teams are doing what they're doing <laughs> and winning sport, their championships. So we definitely want to recognize all of our athletes as a, as a, as including uh, as part of what we're trying to do with our NAG athletes. Uh, Sherry Lynn. How much did we raise? That is to be determined. Tammy, can you confirm that number? I will have to wait because I wasn't at the last event, so I wasn't sure what, what was brought in at the last event. But it was from the first three events, four events, it was $8,000 plus. I think, uh, thank you for that, Tammy. So just to uh, share, Lynn, once we get the confirmed numbers, I think it will be just over $10,000 is my guesstimate. But we'll confirm that. Okay, Council, are there any further questions or comments in relation to scheduling? So we do have a couple, a few community events coming up. We'll get uh, the dates confirmed when we know the NAG event for the athletes. We want to try to work uh, with Danielle Johnson to uh, to look at the date. So that's just the, uh, we'll get that confirmed and sent out to you. But we do have the Brandon Mentor date again to community. You will see start to see communication go out. For that event, that will be happening again August 3rd uh, from the, at the Community Hall from 5 till 7. That being said, that does complete our agenda for political liaison uh, this morning. At this point in time, I'll look to a motion to adjourn. Moved by Greg. Seconder? I'll second, Sherry Lynn. Seconded by Sherry Lynn. All in favor? Any opposed? Seeing or hearing none, motion is carried. Thank you now to everybody for joining us this morning on Political Liaison. I hope everybody was able to to uh, to go over to, the, we had our big powwow this weekend. I know I got to go over yesterday. It was really nice before uh, the storm. 
Um, but again, it was really busy. I know we always are looking to improvements uh, with the powwow committee. I've heard uh, many improvements happen. I know the site location was still, uh, you know, a topic of discussion. I know traffic is always a topic of discussion. You know, it was nice to see that we didn't have, you know, any major uh, accidents or anything. Our police were on site. So again, it was a really uh, well attended powwow weekend. So I'm glad to uh, uh, see that and want to say a big congratulations to all of those on the powwow committee. So that does complete our agenda and I hope you have a great uh, rest of your Monday. Meow to everybody for joining and have a great day.